Oh, I'd have loved to, Andy. But we've got a bit of a do on. Well, it's the crowning of the Miss Frozen Chicken UK. I know. But Paul and I have got a very special reason for going. A bit of a do. A bit of a do. Smiling faces in public places. Getting to know the in laws much better than expected. A bit of a do. Invited to a bit of a do. It's a small town, posh nosh affair. Best behavior, being aware of others who are doing it too. Others who are seeing through you. A bit of a do. All tickety boo. A bride's dimension attracts attention. A scruffy young groom who defies convention. A bit of a do, bit of a do. Invited to a bit of a do. Do do do. Ted, I'm glad you came. Thank you for inviting me. What's wrong, Ted? Have you lost your voice? No, I'm not talking to you. Ted, there's no need to take it like that. Ted, good to see you. Or to you. What? Ted wouldn't talk to me. He isn't talking to me. He's accepted my invitation and he isn't talking to me. I'll talk to him. Will he talk to you? Well, if he doesn't, I'll give him a talking to such as he's never had. Thank you for inviting me, Neville. Don't thank me. Thank Cockadoodle Chickens. Rodney's invited me and my guests. I think he genuinely believes he's doing me a favour. And you thought if you have to endure it, why shouldn't I? Exactly. Then no. Neville, will you give me a straight answer to a straight question? That rather depends what the question is. The question is, are you having an affair with my wife? Certainly not. Why on earth should you think I am? On the slenderest of evidence. She told me she loved you. What? She said it was serious and the real thing. She did. I assure you this is complete news to me, Lawrence. Is it? You took her to dinner at the Majestic last Thursday. My God, have you been employing a private detective? The wine waiter told me. The patient of mine is an awful gossip. He's an awful wine waiter. I've had a couple of dinners with Liz, that's all. Totally platonic. Well, there may have been the vaguest tingle of sexuality. You know Liz. Who doesn't? Me, in that sense, I do assure you. Hello, Ted. I gather that you're not talking to Rodney. Aren't you talking to me, then? I'm talking to you, but I've got no quarrel with you. Oh, Ted, life's too short. Rodney's your oldest friend. Was. Ted! Was, Betty. It's my life, that foundry. It was a tumble-down mess of rusting sheds. It was mine. It made things, good things. Best toasting forks this side of Scandinavia. I mean, it did. And when it fails, what did my oldest friend do? Does he sympathise? Does he yell as like? He rushes in and buys it. With stupid birds crapping on the very spot where quality door knockers had been lovingly fashioned by skilled craftsmen. You got a quick sale at an excellent price. Rodney was helping you in your fight to return to solvency. It wasn't an excellent price. It's a market price. For a site in that area, in that condition, sold at that speed, under those circumstances, the market price was an excellent price. He was helping himself. He was getting just what he wanted, just when he needed it. I mean, be honest, Betty, he was. Well... I won't deny it was convenient, but business is business. Exactly. It doesn't count for much when business is concerned. Doesn't lifelong friendship. Eh? So I'm not talking to you. Oh, Ted. It is big night. It is turn to host the crowning of Miss Frozen Chicken UK. Please, Ted, for me, don't spoil his big night. I'm sorry. Well, why did you come, then? Because I wanted to spoil his big night. You promised me there's nothing behind these dinners with Liz? Nothing. 
I've taken Rita out more often than Liz. No, but that's only because you have to keep making up to her for being so rude to her. Oh, yes, I suppose so. No, actually, I find her quite good company. I admire her spirit in refusing to have Ted back. You admire Liz's spirit in refusing to come back to me? That's different. I, I wish she would come back to you. Would you, um, would you make one last appeal to her for me? As my oldest friend. I mean, what are friends for if they can't help each other in times of need? Well, if you put it that way, yes, I, I'll talk to her. I'll talk to her tonight. Tonight? She's my other guest. I thought I'd try a bit of peacemaking. Get you together in public where you'd be forced to be polite. Ah, well, that principle doesn't seem to have worked too brilliantly at recent functions. What do we have to do with this? It's only unlocking a fire exit. You can't say that when we know that 15 fanatical feminists are going to burst in through it and disrupt the crowning. Why can't they come in the front way? It's a security system. <sighs> Rodney's a friend, Jenny. I know this works for him. More shame on him. With a philosophy degree, he ought to know it's wrong to keep chickens in conditions of abject misery. With a philosophy degree, he knows how superior people are to chickens. Not morally. Chickens don't keep people cooped up in conditions of abject misery. Well, they would if they were superior to people. We don't know that. They might be wonderful employers. Anyway, they aren't protesting against cruelty to chickens. Well, uh, there might be some animal rights people as well. Oh, Jenny. I mean, you yourself have twice refused to let Uncle Rodney's chickens out. Only because you can't suddenly say to a chicken, push off from now on, you're free range. It's like letting prisoners out of jail with no aftercare. It's West Midlands oven-ready poultry. It's humiliating. Yeah, right. Treat it as if she's a lump of meat like the chickens. Exactly. Battery people. It's appalling. Well, come on, then. Yeah, right. Oh, <laughs> well, thanks for inviting me, incidentally. Well, we just hope if you meet Ted often enough, it'll lead to a reconciliation. Is it you who's invited him here? Yes. Oh, Betty. Rita. You and Ted breaking up, Ted not talking to Rodney. It's, well, it's as if a whole era is ending. Well, maybe it is. Eras do. Hi. Uh, Rita. Not, not being inquisitive, but... Um, did there ever turn out to be anything in that business between you and Neville? I think so, yes. What do you mean you think so? Well, he keeps taking me out to dinner. Huh? I mean, I think he likes me, but uh, we've never got farther than a friendly goodnight kiss. You see, I think I'm the first woman he's taken out since his wife died, and he's got to learn the whole process of getting to know somebody again, step by step. I think I'm falling in love with him, Betty. Oh, Rita. Well, there's no need to be so shocked. I'm not a nun. Oh, my God, I must have led a dim sort of a life. You all seem to think I'm about as emotional as a pumice stone. Be honest, Betty. Does the idea of a relationship between Neville and me strike you as totally impossible? Oh, no, I wouldn't say that. I mean, I've known the most unlikely and unsuitable liaisons. Thank you very much. Oh, Rita, all this change. What'll happen to our friendship? Oh, it'll survive, if it's worth anything. Anyway, you two don't need us. You've got so much affection for each other. <laughs> yes, that's true. <laughs> oh, my God. I feel sick with nerves. It'll be all right as long as he doesn't get drunk. Well, he oughtn't to. By my calculations, it's about your turn. What on earth do you mean? Nothing. Are you suggesting that Rodney and I take it in turns to get drunk? Well, it does seem to happen that way. See? Well, we certainly learn about our friendships. Betty, it's one of the things we love and adore about you. Comment on it and I'll belt you on. Comment on what? My name tag. Elvis Sincock. My shame revealed for all the world to see. Why are you wearing it? Because I have to, you twit. Rodney's made all the cockadoodle chicken employees wear it. Philosophy graduate learns hard lesson about nature of freedom. Elvis, I presume you're aware that I don't like being called a twit. Of course, that's why I call you a twit, you twit. Do you know why I don't like being called a twit? Because it offends your inflated ego. Utterly wrong. It's because I know I'm a twit, you twit. What? Do you think I chose to be a twit? 
Simon, please, this is terrible. We'll end up as friends if you carry on like this. Oh, hello. What have you two been up to? Oh, well, nothing. Nothing at all. What would you listen? No, nothing. Why? You look too nonchalant to be true. I think some swift naughties have been going on. <laughs> oh, Mel to be a tweet. There you go, sir. Just the job, tickety boo. Here. Have you ever told you about my ex-brother-in-law from Falker? Yes. Oh, well, the most amazing things happen. Is it really? How amazing? You see, he's an income tax inspector during the day and an amateur ventriloquist at night. Amazing. Look after my drink, will you, Eric? There's no need to look guilty, Jenny. You're forgiven for not helping me let my chickens out. I'm glad you didn't. Uh, you haven't forgotten the two vegetarian meals, have you? <sighs> two? Don't tell me you're vegetarian as well. I credited you with a mind of your own. Well, I use my mind of my own. I find my mind of my own. Finds that what most of Jenny thinks with her mind of her own is right. Paul doesn't have any false machismo hang-ups which force him to argue just so as to assert his independence. Oh, good. I am glad. Well, you see, his ex-wife came from Lower Stoff and she used to do the most amazing doggy impressions when she'd had a few. Anyway, this night we've been out on the sauce in Rim. Excuse you know, the way me. you do. When... Are we going to wait all night while you read a book at bedtime? Oh, pardon me for being human. I'm going to complain about your attitude. Jenny. What? Well, you're not one of those trendy socialists who treat real working people like dirt. Besides oh. which, I'm thirsty. Jenny! Ah, Paul. Oh. I'm sorry, I can't stop. I've got to talk to you. You've got to talk to Carol Fallingbridge and all. <laughs> You are. She wants to see you. Says it's urgent. Oh, heck. Hello, Rodney. Hello, Paul. Hello, monstrous. Hello, Liz. You look... What were we going to say? Beautiful? Enormous? Beautiful and enormous. Come on, meet my other guest. Other guests? Lawrence. Hello, Liz. Hello, Lawrence. Oh, dear. I feel rather like the Secretary-General of the United Nations. Oh, good God. When you had your quick one-night stand with me, you never dreamt you were having the future winner of the in-house beauty contest and second favourite for Miss Frozen Chicken UK, did you? Oh, my God. I'm six to one at William Hills and nine to two at Ladbrokes. Carol, why have you dragged me up here? I saw you and Jenny opening a fire exit. Why? We like fresh air. Paul, I know Jenny. What are you two up to? I can't tell you. Do you want me to tell Jenny about us? Hello, Jenny. Your heroic, caring, feminist husband had it off with me the night his son was born. Oh, you wouldn't. Wouldn't I? This is my big night. We're letting in a group of protesters against the exploitation of women and chickens. They're going to disrupt the judging. Get it called off or I'll tell Jenny. <laughs> Carol, we have to do it. Exploiting female flesh is wrong. There'll never be an equal number of women MPs and judges while women agree to be assessed on beauty rather than brains. It isn't just beauty. There's personality and deportment. Personality and deportment, it's an insult. This is my big chance. Last year's Miss Frozen Chicken UK went on to be Miss Kidderminster, Miss West Mercia, and Miss European Processed Meat Products Category 2. Why don't you protest about my sister on the supermarket checkout, eh? Dull work, low pay, long hours, and Mr. Priddle blaming when there's no price on things, which isn't her fault. That's exploitation of women. This is fun! Well, I agree. I mean, maybe we should go down there as well, but that doesn't make this right. Anyway, how can I get it called off? What will I tell Jenny? Well, that's your problem. Oh, heck. Uh, uh, good evening. I'm delighted to inform you we aren't having chicken tonight. <laughs> so, now, without further ado, let's meet the 20 lovelies selected by the regions of our great boom industry. The judges are looking not only for beauty, but for elegance, charm, moral fibre. Now, let me introduce, ladies and gentlemen, beauty number one, the reigning Miss Dundee Drumstick, Hannah McPherson of Caledonian Chickens. <laughs> Hannah hails from Motherwell.
She's 19. She's a chicken trusser. She has brown hair, green eyes. She's 5 foot 7. And her statistics are 35, 25, 35. Our second charmer is Denise Saltmarsh of Choice Chicky Chunks Limited. Denise, the reigning Miss West Midland Overbred in Poultry, is a native of Hales Owen. She's a promotional assistant. She has auburn hair, green eyes. She's five foot four, and her statistics are 36, 26, 37. Never would. What? In private. Our third Aphrodite is Beverly Roberts of Happy Valley Poultry. What about? I couldn't tell you. Beverly resides in Basildon. She's 20 years of age, has black hair, brown eyes. She's five foot five. Her statistics are 38, 28, 38. And she works as a chicken stripper. What's all this about, Paul? Can I get you anything? No, thanks. We're just, uh, no thanks. Look, um, I'm sorry I was rude earlier. Oh. Oh, that's all right, madam. No problem. It was my fault. I shouldn't have been telling stories when we were busy, you see. But my ex-brother-in-law from Falcon... Look, we're trying to have a private conversation. Will you just shut up? Pardon me for breathing. My God, you're a hypocrite. You're furious with me when I'm rude, and then you're even ruder. Well, I apologise, so should you. I, know, but you... I won't listen till you've apologised. Bloody hell. Look, I'm sorry. Nothing would please me more normally than to hear about your ex-brother-in-law from Selkirk. Falkirk. Falkirk, Selkirk. What does it... Bl I'm sorry. Normally, I would love to hear about your relatives from Falkirk, Selkirk, Alloa, Breakin and Forfar, but I can't right now because we've got a crisis. Not because I don't regard you as my social equal, I do. Thank you very much, sir. Oh, what is going on? Carol saw us opening the fire exit. She wants us to call off the protest. Well, she would. Yeah, but Jenny, it's her big night, her chance to escape a life of drudgery. At what cost to her sex? <laughs> it's not just beauty, it's, it's personality and deportment. They're looking for an honest girl of high moral calibre. Sleeping with your uncle and having an abortion when you're 16, honest and of high moral calibre? You would. Carol did that. Well, it was ages ago. I mean, it's irrelevant. But the, uh, the judges might not think so. They hardly like to find out. True. Oh, God. What is it? Oh, I don't know. It must be something I ate. But you haven't eaten anything. Well, that's it. It's something I didn't eat. Had a word with Jenny. Oh, yes. Yes. And? Oh, yes. What? Carol, did you uh, have relations with a. Uh, with a relation? And uh, when you were 16. You sod. I could tell the judges that, couldn't I? If you tell Jenny about us. He was a pig. He got me drunk. When Mr. Rodenhurst found out, he sacked me. Go, oh, go on, tell the judges. I'm not going to win anyway. Oh, Frank. I can't. I'm going to tell Jenny. No, Paul. I couldn't tell Jenny either. No, I'm going to. I've got to. I can't live with it. No, don't tell her. There's no need. Yes, there is. I must. Oh, please, don't. Well, I must go. I'm on in a minute. Well, look. I hope you win. Some chance. Denise Saltmarsh has been sleeping with all the judges. Oh, how awful. I know. Have you seen them? I meant, is the corruption everywhere?
There's something I've got to tell you. The night Thomas was born, it was a very, uh, well, not disturbing, emotional time. I'd never been a father before, and I was a bit... I mean, not that there's any excuse, but... Uh, Jenny. Carol and I... Oh, no. Oh, God. It only happened once. Oh, good, what oh, a relief. Jenny, listen, please. Just now, when I told Carol what you just told me, she said she could never tell you what I've just told you. So, you see... I needn't have told you. I told you because I wanted to. Does that make a difference? Well, it does to me, yeah. Well, sod you! Jenny, it means I'm terribly sorry. It means I love you. So, it's over. Our pathetic marriage. Your laughable commitment, your brief career as a father. No, I... Take your hands off me. Not you, me. Angie? Something dreadful happened. I've left Paul. Um, look, can I come round and bring the baby and stay a few days? Oh, thanks, Angie. They're all through there, stuffing themselves on roast beef and all the trimmings. And I hate being idle. I'm not that sort of a barman. So I thought, I know, I'll ring Alec, eh? Just the job, tickety-boo. Here, Alec, have you ever told you about my ex-brother-in-law from Falkirk? Alec? Funny. Hello, oh, Angie. Is uh, Jenny there? Yeah, I know I have. Look, can I talk to her? Angie? Oh, heck. Five minutes, Miss Fordenbridge. Oh, heck. And her ambition is to open her own riding school. What's happened? They've been gone for an hour and a half. Shh. Next, number 19, our very own Carol Fordenbridge of Cock Doodle Chicken. <laughs> Carol's hobbies are travelling, cooking, roller skating, and collecting antique jewellery. Her ambition is to drive a Formula One powerboat. I mean, they've missed the special ratatouille. Look, they've had a row. I know young people are probably crying in each other's arms by now. Shh. It last, but not least, number 20, all the way from Bridport in Dorset, Davina Winkle of Ambrosia Poultry Company. Davina's hobbies are meeting people, keeping fit, and designing her own clothes. Her ambition is to open her own fashion house. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, the judges will begin the hard work of reducing the tremendous 20 to the fabulous five. I don't envy them. You are wonderful. <laughs> Please talk to Rodney. All this passing notes is so childish. What are you doing if you're not passing notes? That's different. I've passed you a note because I didn't want them to know, not because I'm not talking to you. Ted, Rodney's enough on edge with his comparing without your contribution. I am not on edge. I have the natural pent-up excitement of the performer. That's not being on edge. I didn't intend on edge to be rude, Rodney. I just meant you can do without overgrown schoolboys passing your notes, especially tonight. You have a real grievance. That is standing on adult dignity. That is not behaving like an overgrown schoolboy. Oh, God, Betty, why do men take umbrage so easily? Ted, 
Whatever the rights and wrongs of the affair, make it up with Rodney. What do you mean, whatever the rights and wrongs of the affair? Ah! Rita, 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 what are you doing? Screaming. We used to be such good friends. Now, we can't open our mouths without rubbing somebody up the wrong way, and I find that very unpleasant, so I screamed all right. No, it is not all right. People do not scream at public functions. Well, all the more reason for doing it, then. Am I imagining things, or did Rita just scream? I think she did. I wonder if she's going off her head. I think she's discovering how to express her feelings. That can be quite intoxicating, Lawrence. Is the insinuation in that particular verbal hand grenade that I can't express my feelings? Good Lord, no. I'm sure you'd be able to express them if you ever had any. Children, please. Don't be discouraged, Neville. They wouldn't bother to be so rude to each other if they didn't care. That, that's psychology. Is it? Ah, I've always assumed that people are nice to each other because they like each other and nasty because they don't. But I'm probably very naive and simple. I rather hope somebody might deny that. Is that Elvis's psychological theory, Simon? Well, yes, actually it is. You're becoming rather friendly with him, aren't you? No, we never do anything but argue. According to his theory, that makes you bosom pals. Would you object? Well, I wouldn't say it was a friendship that would advance your career in this town. Are you in a strong position to criticise liaisons with the Sincock family, dear? I'm sure young Paul will be a good husband to Jenny. She could have done a lot worse. Oh, yes. Virtually every other road sweeper in England would have been worse. Oh, you really are a terrible snob, Mother. I think I'm rather a good snob. Olympic class. You're not so bad yourself, which is just as well as it's your only talent. I am a snob, and I regret it. If I weren't, you wouldn't have married me. Cheer up, Neville. This is very encouraging. Ladies and gentlemen, the judges have selected their shortlist of five. Meet finalist number one, Denise Saltmarsh of Choice Chicky Chunks Limited. Hello, Denise. How are you feeling now? I don't know, really. I feel quite... You know. Confident? Well, yeah, sort of. Jolly good. Tell us more about this fascinating hobby of yours, these ancient Ming vases. How do you get interested in them? Dunno, really. I just like them. Uh, you were telling me your great uncle had a house full of Chinese curios and they fascinated you. Yes, that's right, he did. <laughs> and they did. Uh, jolly good. Tell us more about this unusual ambition of yours. Uh, why do you want to be a freelance hairstylist? And I really, I just do. Charlie, good. Thank you, Denise Saltmarsh. <laughs> uh, our second finalist, Carol Fallingbridge of Cockadoodle Chickens. <laughs> How are you feeling now, Carol? Well, I'm a little bit tense. Oh, not too bad. I'm pleased to have got into the last five, and if I can go further, it'll be a bonus. Uh, jolly good. Tell us more about this unusual ambition of yours. To drive a Formula One powerboat. Oh, well, I like boats. I like the sea. I think speed's quite exciting. And I don't see why the men should have it all their own way. Yeah. Absolutely jolly good. Now <laughs> uh, you're right. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I apologise for the delay, and I'd like to thank all those who helped remove those misguided people. They weren't misguided, they were right. We did. Well, let's face it, they were. This is all ridiculous. Well, I, I don't think they were right, but I do have a sneaking admiration for their courage and passion. Don't tell me he's going soft as well. Anyway, we aren't going to let it spoil our evening, for which many people have spent a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the three winners will be presented with their awards by last year's Miss Frozen Chicken UK, Karen Parkinson. Why did you say that just now about them protesters being right? Well, because it's true. I will now introduce the winners in reverse order. Third, Carol Fallingbridge of Cockadoodle Chickens. <laughs> I 
how would you like it if you were described as a crinkly-haired ex-company director, five foot eight, bloodshot eyes, vital statistics, 38, 38, 5, 38? Our runner-up is Beverly Roberts of Happy Valley Poultry. What's the five? What do you think? Rita, that's very personal. And grossly inaccurate. Our winner is... Denise Saltmarsh of Choice Chicky Chunks Limited. Did it ever occur to you that maybe a woman's chest measurements are personal too? I don't know what's got into her, mate. Honestly, I don't. <laughs> Apologise to Rodney for me, will you, Betty? Well, why don't you do it yourself? No, no, no chance. No. I feel rather like a change of scene. Liz, would you like to come and have a drink in the bar? Why not? Good idea. Ow! Yes, um, you and Liz go and have a drink, Neville. Sorry about that, but Neville's promised to feed my course with your mother. If your friend Elvis's psychological theories are true, it must stand a chance. Yes. I had an ulterior motive in asking you out here, Liz. Oh, good. What? Uh, before I embark upon the particular matter I want to raise with you, I must ask you about a different, though by no means entirely unrelated matter. Stop sounding so legal, Neville. Uh, sorry. At the horse racing evening, Lawrence mentioned something to me that I didn't then understand. I later learnt, to my considerable, as you can imagine, that he was alluding to remarks made by you, the gist of which was that you loved me. As a pure formality, this, I must ask you, did you tell Lawrence that you loved me? Yes. You did? But, Liz, why? Because I do. What? Love you. Lord. Lord. Good Lord. To your considerable what? Uh, what? You said that when you realised what Lawrence was talking about, this was, in your own words, to this court, if I can recall... Uh, Liz. Well, you're still sounding rather legal, Neville. You said Lawrence mentioned a matter that you didn't understand. You later learned to your considerable that I'd said. I loved you. Your considerable what? I mean, delight, horror, amusement? Amazement. Is it really that surprising? I loved you when we were young, Neville. Good Lord. You never suspected? I uh, think I was a pretty immature and stupid young man. I thought you might think of denying that. Well, I did think of denying it, but you almost broke my heart, Neville. I sometimes wonder if I only married Lawrence because he was your friend and I hoped I might still see you. So, you see, I've at least half loved you for more years than I care to think of. So, the reason for your... Uh... Peccadillos, amours, sordid liaisons. Um, no, good Lord, no. Uh, well, uh, yes. Is that I have been very unhappy for many years and only stayed with Lawrence because I felt I owed it to the children? Yes. Good Lord. But this is... Dreadful. Wonderful. I don't know. One or the other. So, uh... Well, this is rather delicate, Neville, but I've started, so I'll finish. Our next contestant is Liz Rodenhurst, whose specialised subject is botched lives. What is rather delicate? Well, I know how much you and Jane wanted children. I mean, happy and fulfilled though you were, I hastened, and I thought, well... I'm about to have a child who has no father, and I thought, well... Is it meant? Good Lord. Good Lord. Liz, all I can say is good Lord. So it would appear. Anyway, the whole thing astounds you, and we should probably forget all about it. Now, what is this other matter you wanted to raise with me? Ah, uh, well, Lawrence has asked me to ask you to go back to him. Will you? No. Good. Well, I've done what I promised. No, I haven't. I said I'd plead. Liz, I beg of you. Think of your marriage vows. Think of your husband, my friend, 
lonely in that drafty great house. Well, I mean, not drafty. I wouldn't want you to think I was ever cold when I... Think of the many years you've spent together. Your children who both love you. Both. Reconsider this decision. Give Lawrence one more chance, I beg of you. Will you do it? No. Good. Marry me, then. Yes. Neville. You serious? Yes. I honestly think I am. You see, I did at least half love you before I met Jane. Although I was too shy and stupid to see that you loved me. So, yes, I honestly think I am. Do you really mean yes? Yes. Good Lord. <laughs> Dancing with Miss Frozen Chicken, UK. What a nerve. How many women have you had, Simon? Well, haven't counted. As few as that. I'm a professional man in a small town, Elvis. I have to be discreet. Opportunities are rare. Give over. There must be times when you're showing a lady client round the house. You're in the commodious, handsomely proportioned master bedroom with luxury bathroom en suite. And you're tempted to remove a spacious knickers and make mad passionate love to her. And that sort of thing just doesn't happen at Trellis, Trellis, Openshaw and Finch. I wish I was clever enough not to have to worry about towing the line. I'm going to take you in hand, Simon. I'm going to transform your life. I'm going to open uncharted seas. Oh, dear. Ah. Oh. You've had your little chat with Liz? Uh, yes, uh... I have, yes. And? Well, I'm, I'm afraid things didn't go entirely to plan. I did, I do assure you, I did put your case very forcibly. Very forcibly. I pleaded, begged, but to no avail. Oh. Well, thank you anyway. Not at all, it was a pleasure. Well, not a pleasure. I was glad to do it for you. Tell me honestly, Neville, as a friend, do you think there's any hope? Well, I have to say, as a friend, I'm afraid there isn't any hope at all. How can you be so sure? Well, I also have to tell you, also as a friend, I do assure you, that we're engaged. What? Liz is going to ask you for a divorce and then she's going to marry me. Yes. You bastard. I would like to assure you categorically, Lawrence, that as a friend, and as a lawyer, that I have satisfied myself thoroughly and completely... I bet you have, you swine. ...that I have satisfied myself thoroughly and completely that the breakdown of your marriage to Liz was irrevocable, and that I elicited this information without prejudice, without asking leading questions, or influencing her decision in any way. You assured me not three hours ago that you had no knowledge of any relationship between you. I didn't then. And now you're engaged? Yes. You bastard. Hello, Neville. Uh, I, I was wondering if you'd like to brave the perils of my cooking and come to dinner one night. That sounds lovely, Rita. <sighs> Absolutely lovely. Rita, I have some news that may be rather a surprise to you. Liz and I are going to be married. What? I thought you'd be surprised. I'm rather surprised myself. Well, congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> you won't mention this to a soul, will you? But I wanted you to know. Me? What? Why? I rather like you, Rita. And I rather fancied you rather like me. I thoroughly enjoyed our little dinners together. I felt an air of relaxed, undemanding companionship that I've only ever had before with male friends. Didn't you feel it? Oh, yeah, yes. Yeah, yes, they, they were lovely and, and relaxed and undemanding. And I hope you'll both be very happy. Oh. Well, what's wrong? I was. 
You are. I was wrong about something and now I've been put right, so I'm not wrong anymore, so everything must be all right, mustn't it? You're the philosopher. Mum. Your education was a complete waste of money. You're totally inarticulate. No, it's just that... I mean... Mum. Exactly. Do you feel like buying your mother a very large drink, Elvis? Mum. Hello, Carol. What's wrong? Jenny's left me. She's... She's taken Thomas. You told her? I had to. You idiot. I'm, uh, I'm sorry about the protest. It was dealt with. Did you win? No. I came third. To need salt marsh one because you've been sleeping with all the judges and the coloured girl came second just to show they're not prejudiced. I'm not sorry about the protest. The whole thing's a farce. A bloody farce! But what the hell's going on? The whole evening's been a disgusting mishmash of corruption and chauvinism and stupidity and decadence that can only be mounted in a society so rotten it's disintegrating. Yes, I know that. But what happened? Jenny's left me. Oh, God, no, why? I slept with Carol Fordingbridge. You didn't. Elvis! Oh, don't get on at me. He did it. And you admire him for it. I think that's worse. Philosopher. <sighs> Bloody hell! What a family. What a family indeed. you better come home with me, Paul, eh? Two fools together. Oh, my God, here's another one. Hello, Paul. Hello, Rita. Good night, Ted. I'll get me coat, Paul. Uh, Rita. What? <clears throat> Have you heard something very secret and confidential involving Neville and Liz? Yes, it seems so secret and confidential that everybody knows about it. And if you gloat, I'll knock your block off. No, 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 not gloating. No, I'm just mean, you know, I mean, well, I <coughs> thought, uh, doesn't it change things? I don't think so, no. Just means I've made a, an utter fool of myself, as usual. No, what I mean is, I mean, well, it mean, it makes, it makes us... Free. Try again, don't it? I don't think I want to try again, Ted. Rita, why not? Give me one good reason. You're so small-minded. Refusing to talk to Rodney, it's pathetic. After what he did... Pretending he doesn't exist doesn't solve anything. Oh, look out, here comes Ted. Well, well, it wasn't a bad meal, you know, to say that they were, well, catering for a crowd. No, quite good, better than the last time, anyway. Yeah, I mean, you know, it could have all gone off a great deal worse. <laughs> I suppose so. Oh, I yeah. feel I've aged ten years, so. <laughs> You're talking to him. Yeah, well, you know, I don't want to seem petty, Becky. <laughs> I am glad. <clears throat> You're both sober. I have always enough problems tonight with that. What do you mean? Hmm? Nothing. No, no, it's just nothing. No. Are you suggesting we usually aren't? No, it's just that, um... We take it in turns to get drunk. <laughs> <coughs> well, yes. Just something that Rita said earlier tonight. No, tack that woman. Never has had. Apparently people have got this idea that you and I get drunk alternately. Mm. Don't, don't be offended, Romney. I mean, it's, it's one of your more likeable qualities. No, I'm working it out. Do you know, I think it's true. I think we do. Oh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just can't say goodnight. Good night, Rita. And thank you for coming. Thank you for inviting me. It's been quite a night. Good night. Rita. 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 <laughs> Talking to Rodney. Talking to Rodney wasn't a qualifying test I was putting you through, Ted. Rita, Rita, no. What is it that I have to do? Something that's impossible. Behave up till now differently from what you have done. So this is it then, is it? I really do think so, Ted. Oh, Rita. Oh, heck, I mean, don't look, don't get me wrong. I mean. It's not important, but I mean, the house. 
Well, that's no problem. I've got the house you walked out of, you've got the flat she walked out of. No, well, I mean, it's not important, it doesn't matter, but I mean, I paid for it, you're living in it. I'll move out soon, don't worry. I don't want you to move out. I want to move back in. Oh. Can't we, you know, can't we try again? Do you really want to, Ted? Surely we ought to be able to find something better. Where am I going to find anything better? A failed bankrupt with no money. I didn't think you'd failed. I thought you were moving sideways into design. Well, I am, yeah, I know. But, I mean, I can't concentrate without a good woman. Find one. We're a splendid set. Most of us. I'm off now. I couldn't leave without congratulating you. I understand you're engaged. I must thank your fiancé for inviting me. He's a stickler for good manners. He tried so hard to bring us together tonight. He must be devastated by the extent of his failure. Lawrence, you wouldn't have wanted to bring up my child. You never seemed all that keen on your own. Maybe I wanted a second crack at parenthood. It's possible one learns from one's mistakes, don't you think? But it may grow up to look like Ted. Well, I don't resent Ted anymore. I pity him. He was just a pawn in your game. That's a dreadful thing to say. Is it? You're not having the baby because you want Ted's child. You're having it as an excuse to break with me and as a bait to trap Neville. Are you suggesting I planned all this? How much does a cat plan? Or does it just instinctively behave in such a way that it gets what it wants? Neville, I'm going to get my coat. If I stand here much longer, there is a danger. Your charm will have me wishing I'd never left you. Bye, Liz. Thank you for inviting me, you bastard. Oh, God. 